Now, it's usually said that Richard's equations are too complicated to be solved in, in two dimensional, in one dimensional. Many say that they are solving, but many are not solving actually. Then you go about how do you do this, how do you do that? Ah, by a doctor do really doing that, I am a usual. But there are good solutions of religious equations. And we have, it, we have that from at least 20 years. We can solve three dimensional fields of, of, of religious equations uh, numerically with good methods that give good results. However, it can be seen, religious equations can be simplified. So, we start to rewrite the religious equation here. I did a change of coordinates. Here. We have Howard Hislop. Howard Hislop is Tilted. I use a coordinate along the slope and normal to the slope. X is along the slope. Z zeta is a normal to the slope, pointing down. So the formal equation is more or less the same as before. There are some cosine of theta theta, which is the slope. And uh, here, more or less, what I assume to have is a bedrock here, which is not always granted, actually. And we have a water table here. Water table is a, a depth D. And we, we use this one in the following. So, for simplifying Richard's equation, what can we do? Actually, the first idea is by Iverson 2000, a paper that was dedicated not casually to the uh, shallow landsliding. And so the idea is we take all the variables inside the Richard's equation and we make the 10 dimensions. We take the zeta and we divide it by the depth of the soil. We take the x and we divide it by the length of the hill zone. Because well, we are obviously thinking to a slope scale, no more to a point scale. And all these facilities are here, this paper here. And we also scale the time to a, a reference time of which I will come back later. We scale the fields of pressure. Pressure in hydrology and hydraulics is in meters, so H is a good normalization. We scale the hydraulic conductivity with the reference conductivity here. And we scale also the hydraulic capacity with, with the reference hydraulic capacity. We do another thing. We assume to know how the structure of the, the solution are, or how the structure of the solution is better. The structure of the solution is made in this way here, where we, you can recognize two, two parts. The first part, the other on the other side, don't look at my hand, is a kind of an asymptotic solution. And the other one is called short, short time solution. The asymptotic solution has a simple structure. If the zeta is equal to d, which means that we are at the water table, this term is zero. If zeta is different from d, the pressure is varied linearly. So it's a, the, an hydrostatic, vertical hydrostatic solution. This is an hydrostatic solution, linear. Later on, we have a picture of it. Plus, we have uh, the pressure field which is a transient solution. This explain. This is the terrain zone, which is actually varied, but the year, for simplicity, I assume that it is just going, it is just a single value. If I substitute this C star in the richest equations, a dimensionless Richard equation, I obtained two equations, one for C star S and one for D star. This is the equation for the transient solution and this is the equation for the water table. Actually, 
The equation for the water table comes from the hydrostatic hypothesis that I did it here. I, when I assume the structure of the, of the solution, I assume that the final solution can, comes from the superposition of two terms, and the first term is an hydrostatic solution. So, that's the way I introduce the water table position in Richard's equations. Actually, I, what I am thinking is that in the, the initial condition, more or less, I have this profile of pressure. Negative pressure above the water table here. Positive pressure below the water table here. When it rains, I have infiltration. Infiltration is this small variation here of water pressure along the, anyway, the, the hydrostatic solution. You see a small variation, more pressure on the top because of the water infiltration on the top, but then is mixing with the hydrostatic solution. At the end, what we have, we have again another hydrostatic solution where the water table grew uh, up for this size delta. So that's the rationale for which I used that expansion of the Richards equations. That's not the end of the story, actually. It's a little boring, if you want, but uh, not, not much as we tackle. And uh, the idea is now that uh, you have two equations, one from CS and the other one from Eastern and here you can think that CS is actually developed in a Taylor series of expansions in a third epsilon here, which is the ratio between two time scale, the short time scale and the long time scale, actually there. Well, the short time scale is uh, created, there are not many possibilities in uh, in mixing all the variables inside the Richards equation to obtain the time scales. And one is this one. If you take the square of the solvent and divide it by the, the reference hydraulic diffusivity here, you obtain a time scale. And here you obtain another time scale if you divide the length of the hills between a reference a, a reference hydraulic diffusivity. What we think is that this is the time scale of the normal flow. How much, more or less, is a, an indicator of how much, how is the scale in which infiltration goes normal to the, to the slope and arrive to the water table. And this is instead of the, water, the time scale in which water flows along the hill zone. So, take the dimensional structure equation, substitute, substitute the, uh, the structure of the solution made in terms of an asymptotic solution from plus a transient term. You obtain two cover the equation, one for the rotor table and one for the infiltration. You expand further the solution in terms of uh, epsilon, the time scales, and now you have to consider in this is a cumbersome algebraic work, then you equals the term that the same epsilon. And then you have to solve the equation. What you obtain, the zero perturbation order is this one. You have two equations, the above is for is, uh, infiltration and the below is a uh, water table movement. Uh, actually, the nice thing is that this one dimension is one D. We have no more 2D equation, 3D equation. We have one D equation in this way. We have this term here, which is the connection with the other equation, which is actually related to the movement of the, 
underwater table. And then you here you have the water table, which is the same term here, but you have a cause theta theta to both sides here, yeah, so they neglect it, they go away. And uh, this is the chart deriving from this vertical integration. There is a precise way of calculating it in the paper. That was the first order, but the, the nice thing is that obviously, under certain, while we don't have analytical solution for the three dimensional Richards equations, we have analytical solution for the one dimensional Richards equation, at least in simplified conditions. And so this is a good news. The first order approximation, we can use some analytical solution in some cases. If we go the second or first perturbation order, what happens here? You don't see the color, unfortunately, but uh, was both the same color here and here. And you see that this this part here depends on the zero order part. So this zero order part of the equation, which is the one that contains the derivatives in x and y, is a is a known term. So from this point of view, you take this, you add to this one, and you recover the same structure of the first order, of the zero order equation. You have an infiltration where you calculate the first order solution, the correction in the zero order, with the same equation with a different source term. You have an analogous equation for the water table. That's the first step. The first step of our result was then if you are looking, say we say if you are, if you are looking at the Hillsop scale and the, if all the conditions that I named are supposed to be true, then infiltrate first infiltration, then lateral lateral uh, flows. And that is obviously important to try to forecast the pressure that then drives the stability issues that we have to, to talk about. Now we want to have a more simplified equation. So we take the first or the integrate the zero order equation in the column. And the column of the soil is something like this. We have different type of soil, horizons, pi and we integrate the fluxes over this column. Actually, the column is not planar, it's inclined like this one, of an angle theta theta. What we have on top? On top we have uh, rainfall for the angle, actually, projected. On the bottom, what we have? We have fluxes according to the, the sea levels. With this lambda here is uh, just a, 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 a trick for getting either a flux in terms of uh, the boundary condition in terms of fluxes or the boundary condition in terms of values. And we have also here a P0, which is the water table action on the, on the whole things. In terms of equations, the, in, after the integration, we have the variation of volume of water in the soil column, single soil column, uh, column in a single side, like a, a small tile here, but in the, with, in the Z direction. And we have the rainfall minus the fluxes down there, minus the fluxes, lateral fluxes that we had from the other equation. More or less, there are many models that use this equation. One of these, for instance, is Tom Capi by New and Todini. And the, the equation is more or less the same with some interpretation, let's say, on this further equation. What happens if we take the second, the first order solution 
slow parallel, not slow normal, slow parallel. First, we introduce a transmissivity integrating anyway to the coffee. We already integrate in the column and we adapt both the transmissivity in X and Y directions. And we introduce also here an air class which is called uh, drainable porosity, which is more or less the part of the, of the porosity that contributes to, to the flow. And this is more or less an expression of the goosiness equation, two-dimensional goosiness equation. Obviously, here is also contained the Dupuy hypothesis, which means I assume that inside the water table the distribution of pressure is hydrostatic. We can do even more integration. Look at this part of the basis, and let's say if you look at water catchment, we select more or less in a curvilinear x direction, more or less in the main direction of the flow, x in the y direction orthogonal to it, and then we integrate over a y, which means we take the previous equation, we integrate over y here, and here obviously, and what we obtain is a form of the which is which is these equations here, which is called Hills of Storage Business Equation by Peter Talk and Workers. This is a nice uh, is a nice integration because uh, Peter Talk in the paper of 2007 was uh, able to find an analytical solution for this equation which is actually much longer than the program that you can write for solving numerically. It's like a seven pages of solution. Uh, of solution. It's very long. And, uh, but it's analytical. And here there is the width function, which is a function that describes how many sides you have the same distance in x in the, in the hill slope. And, uh, there is an R, which is the ratio between the saturated hydraulic conductivity and the reference hydraulic conductivity. The hills of width function, more or less, you can have from here. This is a representation. The image, as usual, is not very clear, but you can have uh, the slides later. And you say, with the GIS tool, you can calculate the distance of the hills of, and then if you do the statistics of this distance, you have the width function of the hill slope, of each hill slope actually, that you have in that image. There you have many hill slope as you, as you saw before. And you can enter this function, which is numerical at this point, in the other one. Evidently, the numerical solution is in terms of this function, width function, that you know only empirically, or otherwise you have to, to have a model for the width functions, but that's just one of the things that we can measure, right? With the EMs, uh, obviously we can measure it. So, finally, we can do even more simplification. We neglect all the terms that depends on time. We say, oh, the thing is stationary. This damn stuff is stationary. And so, what we obtain is this equation for the water table, which is a generalization from the default equation of uh, the whole and which is usually in Shalstab. Dino will talk about Shalstab. I don't know if other will talk about Shalstab, for instance. You can simplify, you can add assumption. If you, if you say, uh, Hydraulic conductivity is decreasing exponentially with depth. We obtain more or less the top model, the top model assumption. So we discover these these things that the top model is actually not a rainfall or enough model, but is a model of fluxes in the in the hill slope, in the in the soil. Even if it was sell for years and years as a rainfall or enough model for some reasons. 
So, what message from all this simplification? Now we have pieces of uh, solutions. We have a 1D solution. We say that 1D solution is important because in some conditions the most important thing is the infiltration. So, we can take just 1D, the 1D solution for calculating our pressure in hill slopes and we can use that for doing our stability analysis. Okay, we said, someone said, no, but my conditions are lateral flow counts, so we can add, for instance, linearly, the Businesk equation starts. The solution of the Businesk equations, you can do full solution of the Businesk equation with a numerical method, which it is much less demanding than solving the three-dimensional Richards equations. And for instance, what the model triggers does is exactly these things. Okay, we can do also, we can do, you can do several simplifications of the lateral flow using the asymptotic stationary classes for lateral flow and using the, the complete, the linearized, or what I call the bulk, maybe I will talk later, solution of the infiltration model. Essentially the bulk is I take the water from the, from the rainfall, I put all the water in the soil, and then I move up the, the water table for the for, for water. And I can mix all these solutions to have a model that describes my water pressure in the hill slope. We can do even a little more. We can simplify the, uh, the Businesk equation and for having a kinematic equation, which I didn't show here. But we can assume a kinematic movement of lateral flows. So for instance, for example, take one of these. I take 1D linear, normal flow, 2D asymptotic flow. So 1D is this equation, that there is a source term, but usually then you, the source term are like the cars in the main of the magicians and the prestigi prestigiatore. You hide this part and then you do. Okay, and this is the, you see, this is the same equation as before, the asymptotic terms, the, the, here the, the variables change a little, this is infiltration, this is the volume productivity, this is the slope, but more or less you recognize the term, and you have the asymptotic solution. This is the initial condition, this is the short term solution, transit pressure distribution. According to what we do, to what we did, we can also assume that, for instance, hydraulic productivity are constant. We could assume it's not, but let's say we simplify the most that we can. We assume that hydraulic productivity is constant. So we can write down this equation in terms of hydraulic productivity, which is Kz divided this one. We make constant also this one for some reasons. If we are in a short range of uh, soil water content, I am. I did a, a huge amount of simplifications. Then you have uh, your home exercise is to understand when I, I actually could do it or not do it. Do it. So I obtain this uh, equation, which is. Uh, Linear, linear equation, this is a constant term at this point. And uh, linear equations has two big uh, good things. We know the solution of this equation since 150 years. It's because it's uh, exactly the same that uh, transfer of heat. And the other is that we saw, if we solve this equation for an impulse, an initial impulse, we can use that solution and convolve that solution with the variable input of rainfall, for instance, effective rainfall, and obtain 
the variable output of pressures. This is more or less the skiff. We start for an hydrostatic equation. We have the rainfall input, which is variable in time. We have the solution that we call a response function for the linear equation. We convert this multiplication is convolution operation. We convert this two and we obtain the pressure squared. Very easy, very beautiful, very known, very used even in rainfall or not. And everybody is happy when uh, this happens. We are used not to understand what we do, so when we kind of understand what we do, what we have, we are happy. Obviously, we can solve this equation. The solution is in terms of this function R that you see here. Here, I, uh, before I had dimensionless solutions, here I, I make it again the, uh, with the dimensions, and I normalize in the, the appropriate way, and this is the solution. Who is uh, familiar with uh, the unit hydrograph, he says that it is exactly the same type of solution that we have in unit hydrograph, which is actually a convolution of rainfall plus a, a kernel function that gives us the discharges. And uh, the, the analytical form of this R is known. It is an exponential minus the complementary error function, one minus the uh, the Gaussians, the integral of the Gaussian. Given in this term, this time scale that compared here is related to two, two quantities, the depth and the uh, diffusivity. So for different depth, we have different solutions. And uh, according to this, and also for different times. This is all. This, all, this stuff is all in the paper by Iverson, in the paper by Dodorico et al. In, and the type of solution varying the parameters change like this. This is how the error for normalized time here behave, changing the parameters, and in particular TD, that, that for TD is here z squared divided d zero, you change, you change the shape of the solution. Here you have the, the spike solution. But you have it. So we, you, we can have a complete numerical simplified solution of each other equation after we have, we have done all this bunch of simplified assumptions. So if you have this, why we should use again green up solutions or Horton solutions, for instance, we use this. We should use this because the coefficients are more interpret are not. I did a lot of assumptions, but the coefficient is a physical interpretation. <laughs> Just kidding. I did all these derivations, but I hide to your eyes many things. I, I said several times. And actually, I want to ask you if you care about the hypothesis I did. Uh, look, first I assume KZ, KX, K, uh, KY should be Y here, constant and uniform width, which is not usually true. And uh, now we try to say, to say this is uh, anyway uniform soil, no horizons, sandy loam. This hydraulic conductivity, this water content, mualem, bucket What happened here? Uh, uh, on the top of the soil, more or less, we are in this condition. Here we have uh, 
saturation, more or less. And here we have a little decrease in, uh, in, in, uh, in hydraulic conductivity. My main hypothesis for doing the derivation that I showed you before that is the validity of the of this validity, the, the ratio between this and this is small, which is I S much less than I L. And this is was a derivation from the fact that I assume constant diffusivity through all the horizons, through all the hill slopes. Or at least the existence of these two properties here, a reference conductivity and a reference value of, of the hydraulic uh, uh, capacity. In the initial condition, C0 is this one. Hydrostatic condition. I tell several times during the presentation. Several times. And this is the initial condition and also the asymptotic final condition with a different B. Consequently, at the surface, Z is zero, K is K minus the water table that cos square theta theta theta. If we look at the difference between the hydraulic conductivity at the water table depth and at the surface, we, we see that actually at the, why at the water table depth, sorry, is one. We are here, at the surface we are here. Not very much different in terms of uh, water content, just a little below the circulation but a lot of difference in hydraulic conductivity. A lot of difference. Depends on the soil. So, what we can doubt here is that we can use reference values of hydraulic conductivity and diffusivity for simplifying the equations. D0 cannot be significant. What happens is that our relation is satisfied at the surface with the one I use for simplifying the whole bunch of equations. But if I compare the short time, time the short time, time the short time scale at the surface with the, the lateral time scale at the bottom, at the level of the water table, the two scales are comparable. And therefore, epsilon in my Taylor expansion is not anymore, anymore small, and I cannot neglect the terms. Sometimes epsilon is even larger than one. Here is the time scale here of lateral flow. This at the surface is very unsaturated. This is smaller than this, so water takes more to infiltrate and move laterally at the water table level. 